Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to paint these watercolor Easter eggs. And yes, you can use watercolor to paint directly on fresh, raw, or hard boiled eggs. My secret today is these aren't real and I have been painting eggs for 10 years and I fully expected to go out to my chickens, grab these beautiful eggs. And this year I was planning to blow the middle of the egg out and um, it was a lot harder and more time consuming than I thought it would be but I really wanted to keep my eggs this year so I was able to get one that turned out good and painted it um, but I wanted to do a lot more for you and so while I was at Walmart I saw these really amazing eggs that have papery texture and the best part is they're like ping pong balls so no breaking I can keep them forever I'm using this vase to kind of hold it up so I can paint on it. But you can use any of these techniques to paint on real eggs. They paint almost the exact same way as eggs, or you can look these up online. You don't necessarily have to get them at Walmart. That's just where I found them this year. So with this first design, I went with an all over pattern with a large pink floral. When you're painting with watercolor on these fake eggs or with real eggs, Really the key is to get your paint as highly concentrated, as highly pigmented as possible. So you're going to want to use the least amount of water to grab paint from your palette. Another tip I have for these all over patterns is if you want to paint around the entire surface of the egg, focus on one side at a time because you're going to want one of the sides to dry completely before you flip it over and try to paint the other side. For my palette today, I stuck with this bright pink, greens, yellows, and oranges. I think that's one way to make your collection of Easter eggs look really cohesive is to maintain the same color palette. I also have the theme of very springy. So I just tried to keep it really simple, especially because watercolor on eggs is a lot harder to control than on paper and kept the theme springy and my color palette. So I really wanted to do some carrots. I thought that would be perfect for Easter. So I just painted these little carrots with um, some fun greenery. I kept it really simple because when you're painting on eggs, it can get really overwhelming and really blotchy. So I tried to keep my strokes uh, thin and simple and light. And that way you can see the distinction between the leaves on these little carrots without it being super overwhelming. And one of the great things about carrots is they are kind of lumpy and all kinds of different shapes. So you can really have fun with the shape of your carrots without worrying about needing perfectly straight lines. And then I waited for the carrots to dry and added the little lines that you see on the carrots. And I just thought it went perfectly with the whole theme. So I was in a food mood still, and we just had a bridal shower for my sister-in-law and it was lemon themed and it was so cute. So I just had lemons on the brain. So I wanted to do lemons. They're so springy to me. And this is probably the easiest pattern you will ever paint because it's just two strokes with little knobs at the end to make these kind of oval shapes for lemons. So I wanted to add some texture and interest to the lemons. So I added three little dots in different places on all of the lemons. This just to represent the texture that lemons have and to keep it simple so that all of the dots weren't very overwhelming. And then I added a little stem and some leaves and varied the direction that the leaves were going and varied how many leaves each lemon had associated with it. Again, just keeping it really simple because I think that makes the biggest impact when you're painting on eggs. So for the next design, I wanted to go back to florals, but I wanted to do just a main grouping of florals and not a pattern. And so I started with this peony and I did it in kind of a dusty rose red color, keeping with that pink theme. And then I added some yellow bunches on the side and some greenery, just kind of keeping everything um, elongated and kind of diagonal to maintain some interest in this piece. 
I think what's fun about painting on real eggs, fake eggs, is that you still get a lot of the natural bleeding and blending that happens when you paint with watercolor. And so it's really fun to see all of the bleeds and blending that still happens. And again, keep your pigments really highly concentrated. If it's too watery, the bead of water that forms will just end up dripping down the side of the egg because it's so curved, you'll end up with drip lines down the side of your egg. Another fun thing about watercolor on eggs is when things are dry, you can go back in and add details or a darker contrasting color, which is what I'm doing here with the green. And it really just elevates this from a really flat looking painting, especially with the leaves, to having way more interest. And sticking with the flowers, I felt like we needed more yellow in our set of eggs. And so I went straight to daffodils. I love painting daffodils. So I started with that center trumpet and I painted a few petals coming off the side so it looks as if the daffodil is pointed upward. And then this daffodil here is pointed at us. And so I painted some petals all the way around with a curvy circular trumpet for the middle. You can always go back and layer more colors onto your flower petals with eggs. So that's the nice thing to keep in mind that if your initial lay down of color, especially with yellow, is really light, you can go back and add more. And then I just did the classic leaf for a daffodil and again, kept it really simple so that it would have a bigger impact when it was with all of the eggs together. So as I'm painting these patterns, I'm keeping in mind the entire set of eggs. I don't want to do too many that have stems that are front facing just like the daffodils, but I also don't want to have too many that are patterns or too many that are yellow. So anyway, I knew I needed to add more pink back in and I wanted it to follow the same type of pattern as the daffodils, but I wanted the flowers to be very different than anything I had painted. So it adds a different kind of texture while still feeling part of the same collection. So I did these really fun and wispy type flowers, kind of reminds me of hydrangeas, and I just did really simple dots, lighten some of the areas, and then did these stems. So I wanted these stems to be all connecting. So that would be the difference between these flowers and the daffodils. Really simple green leaves and it's done. So I knew the next design needed to be an all over pattern because I hadn't done one in a while. And I wanted to incorporate the orange that we had started to have in our collection from the carrots. And so I did this really simple and fun pattern of orange flowers and I wanted to keep the flowers small since our last all over pattern had large flowers and then I also added these really tiny yellow dots for kind of a small yellow flower in between the orange flowers and then I used this dark green color to make a one stroke little leaf and filled in the awkward spaces I wanted a really high contrasting center color because I knew yellow would just kind of fall flat. And so I chose black and I thought the contrast between the two colors really makes this flower stand out. For this pattern, I really wanted to show you what it would look like if you did a more classical dyed ombre look. So I took all of the colors within the palette that we've been using, this yellow and orange and pink and green, and did kind of these ombre stripes where they're kind of all blending together and going from lightest to darkest. And again, I'm just doing it on the front side so that I'm not messing up what the back side looks like. And I am going to add a pattern to the top of each color. So each color has its own separate pattern. The top color yellow has kind of a darker yellow stripe. This orange color is going to have a pink flower. So it kind of brings in the pink from the stripe below it. And then a really dark red pink 
polka dot for this pink stripe and then I did a green that kind of goes between both the green layer and the pink layer so I felt like it was a really interesting and cool way to bring all of our themes together into one design and also show you kind of what a design would look like on that classic dyed look. So after that really intense pattern, I brought it back a little bit to a more simple five petal daisy pattern and just kind of changed up the direction that these daisies were pointing, added really simple and light stroke greenery to keep it really airy feeling and not any really heavy strokes. And for the centers of these flowers, I did a very highly concentrated yellow and I just did one very simple dot right in the center. And I just love the simplicity, but the overall effect. And again, I made sure to go through after everything was dry with a high concentration of that darker green pigment and add some details and contrast to the greenery. For this pattern, I wanted to make green the star and keep everything really simple and straightforward. So I just did three very simple green leaf stems, uh, a darker one in the center, and then two lighter, more yellow green stems on the sides. And I do go back at the end and add some more details to some of the lighter areas, but overall just kept the strokes really light the petals, very simple one stroke petals. And I thought this was a great addition to our collection because it really made the green color shine. So we are on to our last pattern and I wanted to bring back some of the yellow and do a simple flower design we hadn't done before. And I knew that when I painted these flowers, I wanted very distinct black centers that were popping out and so that was what I had in mind when I was painting these flowers. They're all pointing upward. And then I did kind of these longer stroke leaves to hint towards some of the longer stroke leaves we had earlier with the daffodils. And then again, keeping the strokes really light and simple so that everything feels airy and not um, just like a big blobby mess. And for those centers that are dark black and popping out, I just did three simple dots with some really tiny lines coming from the dots to the flower. And I thought they make the best impact on this whole egg. I love these centers. And that is it. Thank you so much for being here with me today while we painted this set of watercolor Easter eggs. And don't forget, you can definitely do all of these techniques on real eggs, hard boiled, straight from your chickens, any way that you want it, do it. I just wanted to keep mine forever and this was the best way for me, but I hope you guys have a fantastic day, bye.